In this video we're doing projects 45 through 56 and we have project number 45 here which is the light controlled flicker. And there's what our circuit looks like and the objective is to use light to control our LED there. And so what we've got is a photoresistor hooked up to the hold function of our music IC and the music IC then powers the alarm IC which connects to our LED. So when we turn the circuit on, the LED flashes because of the alarm IC. And it's staying on because the music IC is told to stay on from the photoresistor there. So if I cover it up, the LED goes off and it stops flashing. If I release it, the LED comes back on and it resumes flashing again. So. That is how project number 45 works. So let's move on to project 46. So this is project 46, and it's more sound effects. That's what our circuit looks like. And the objective here is to get more sound effects from the alarm IC. So if I turn on the circuit, you hear a sound that sounds like a police siren and the volume is low from the speaker because again we're using a 100 ohm resistor. It says also that we can manipulate the sound if we turn the circuit on and off quickly. So all I gotta do is kinda just push on the switch a little bit. You can kinda manipulate the sounds out of a circuit if you control the power going to the IC. But that's how project 46 works. So let's move on to project 47. And here we have project number 47 and it's called this or that. There's what our circuit looks like. And the objective here is to show the OR concept in electronic circuits now. This starts getting into things like computer logic, where we start hearing about things like AND, OR, exclusive OR, NOT, and things like that in terms of gates. And so with computer logic, it kind of determines what uh, conditions have to be met for an operation to occur. In this case with the OR, our circuit is set up so we've got our LED, this is our output, and then our conditions are our push button switch, and our slide switch, our 100 ohm resistor, is just to limit the current to the LED to protect it. So if I turn on the switch, the LED lights up. If I push the button, the LED lights up. If I have the toggle switch on, and I have the push button pushed down, it doesn't matter. It'll be on. But it flows through both of them. So that's why it means this or that. This switch or the push button or both will light up the LED. But if both of them are off, the LED will not light. So that's how project number 47 works. So let's do project 48. So here we are with project number 48. This and that is what our circuit looks like. And the objective here is to show you how the AND operation works in electronic circuits. Now, as you saw in the previous project, we did this or that using the OR function. With an AND function, again, our LED is considered our output, and our two switches here are considered our input conditions. Now, with AND, if I turn on the switch, well, the LED doesn't light. If I push the button, the LED still does not light. If I turn on the slide switch and push the button, the LED lights up. So that's how the AND condition works. It's not like the OR condition where either the slide switch or the push button have to be pressed to light up the LED. Both the slide switch and the push button must be on for the LED to light again, the AND condition both of these conditions have to be true. So that's how project number 48 works. So let's do project number 49. So here is project number 49. It's neither this nor that. 
and there's what our circuit looks like. And of course the objective here is to show how the NOR operation works in electronics. Now as you'll note, the red LED is already on, and of course that's our output condition as usual, and our input conditions are the slide switch and the push button. Now as again we've already shown how the OR works, we've shown how the AND works, so how a NOR works is pretty much the opposite of the OR. As again you see the LED is on right now, if I turn on the slide switch, the LED goes out. If I turn it off, the LED comes back on. If I press the push button, the LED goes out. And if I release it, the LED comes on. If I have the slide switch and the push, uh, push button down, the LED is still off. It doesn't come on until both these conditions are false, which in this case means they're off. So a NOR circuit means, again, it's why neither this nor that, which means this nor this can be true, which means neither of them can be on, otherwise the LED will not be on, and this will not be a true condition. So that is how Project 49 works. So let's do Project 50. So here we are with Project 50, which is not this and that. And there's what our circuit looks like. And the objective here is to show how a NAND works in a circuit. Now similar to the previous project with the NOR, the NAND is basically the opposite of the AND function. So as you notice in the circuit, the LED is already on, which means it's a true condition. And our con uh, things that we set are the switch and the push button as usual. And if I turn on the slide switch, well the LED stays on, so it's still a true condition. Now if I press the push button while that's also on, the LED goes out. Now if the push button is on and the slide switch is off, the LED is on, so that's a true condition. So that's what it means by not this and that. So you can't have both these conditions true, otherwise you'll get a false condition on the output. So if one is true, or the other is true, it's okay. But if both are true, it's not. So that is how Project 50 works. So let's go ahead on to Project 51. And here we are with Project 51, which is the reflection detector. And there's what our circuit looks like. And the objective here to build a circuit that can detect if a mirror or other reflective object is present. Now generally this has to be done in kind of a dark room or something like that. But generally you don't have to and I'll show how. I'll just cover the photoresistor with my thumb and turn the circuit on. And generally there'll be no sound that will come out. Again, sound may come on briefly when you first turn it on. But our 2.5 volt lamp is here and it should be nice and bright. We've got our Space War IC hooked up to a speaker, and again, it's controlled via the photoresistor. But the purpose is, is if you hold a mirror or something like that, it's supposed to take the light from the lamp and reflect it, and then be picked up back up by the photoresistor. But in this case, all i got to do is pick up my thumb a little bit, and it'll pick up the light from the, the lamp. See? If I actually tap my thumb, I can kind of change the sounds a whole bunch. And of course, if I hold it closed, no sound comes out. So that's how project number 51 works. So let's do project number 52. So here we are with project number 52, which is the quieter reflection detector. Here's where our circuit looks like. And our objective here, of course, is again to detect a mirror or if there's other reflective objects present, but we make it a little quieter by using the whistle chip and we kind of get a visual notification with the red LED. So if I cover up the photoresistor again, again the LED will start up. 
And we're using the music I see this time instead of the Space War. And it'll stop. And I can just lift up my thumb. And you'll know, get the light from the lamp in there. And activate it. But if I cover it up, it'll turn back off. Because we're in the hold position and not the trigger on the music I see. And of course, it will continue repeating as long as I have my finger off the photoresistor. So that's how no project number 52 works. So let's move on to project 53. So here we are with project number 53. It is the flashing laser light with sound. And there's what our circuit looks like. And our objective here is to build a circuit that sounds like a laser gun with a flashing LED light and sound. So, here's the project, and we've got our alarm IC, and it feeds into our speaker, but it also goes into our red LED. And then we've got inputs 2 and 3 used on the alarm IC to configure the sound output. So when I turn on the circuit, again we get that laser gun sound effect coming out of the speaker and then it also goes to our LED and makes our LED flash along with the sound and of course this will go on continuously while the circuits powered up so that's essentially how project number 53 works so let's move on to project 54 so here we are with project number 54 it is the Space War Flicker. And there's what a circuit looks like. And the objective here is to build a circuit that produces various sound effects. Now I'm going to mention right off the bat that this is basically project number 36. The only difference is, is the motor that we had here in project 36 acting as a conductor is just replaced with a normal snap wire. So when I turn the circuit on, it's actually producing the exact same effects as the Space Battle 2 from Project 36. And because the alarm IC is turning on and off, it's turning the Space War IC on and off, which cycles through the different sound effects. So that's how Project 54 is. Again, it's kind of just a copy of 36 with the minor changes. So let's move on to Project 55. So here we are with Project 55 and 56. Kind of do them together. Project number 55 is Spinning Rings, and Project number 56 is Strobe the House Lights. There's where our circuit looks like with the motor. And you have to cut that disc out from the back of the guide, which is this right here. Now what I've done is actually made a copy of it on the computer and glued it with a glue stick to a piece of cardboard so it's nice and rigid and preserves my manual here. Anyway, when you look at the ring here you'll notice it's got different stripes of colors on it and then it's also got these white lines. Now Project 55 is looking at how these little lines of color appear when we make the disc spin and then you need to pay attention to the white lines for 56 because we'll see it turn but then it may look like the white lines go in another direction and that's because we've got a fluorescent light shining on it and if you read up in the manual more it'll tell you more about that so all I do is press the press switch and you see the disc spin up and if you look at the disc the stripes of colors are now all pretty much one circular disc or one circle of color but you notice they don't get the colors are not as bright as when the disc was sitting by itself the, the colors are a little brighter with just sitting by itself now if we try to look at these white lines now I can I can see it in my camera more than I can with my own eyes looking at it I can see the white line effect if you're looking at the video, you should be able to see it go one direction and then kind of start going the other direction. Because again, the camera is also taking video at 60 frames a second. Now, YouTube, of course, is going to change that. 
so it may not exactly match up when it's being viewed. But that's what that is. So that is Project 55 and Project 56. And that ends this video.